Hey, Bill here with 30 Minute Woodshop. Thanks for joining. Today I'm going to show you how to build a whiskey shelf out of whiskey barrel staves and it's going to include a spot for your Blanton's corks. So let's open this uh, package I got from Skull Creek Design out in Midland, Michigan. There's a, actually a link in their bottom to their Etsy store in case you need these kind of materials. Uh, and oh, by the way, I'm using a really cool little Gerber knife that uh, uses X-Acto blades. So it's perfect for, uh, it's like having a box cutter in your pocket all the time. It's nice and small. And yes, I'm wearing gloves because quite frankly, this stuff is dirty. Oh, here we got a bill of lighting from Travis. Including all the stuff in the box. And a little bit about Skull Creek Design. And I got a 25% discount here for cutting board. So let's take a look. The big trick is not to get all this stuff on you because it's it is pretty messy. So I have several parts with uh, bung holes in it. So those are going to be the sides, and I got several parts because I wanted to make sure I got uh, enough so I could have the right width. Then I got uh, several parts that are one inch or two inches wide. going to be for the uh, so basically what I got here is I got this I'm going to be setting these up as the edges the sides and then these are going to go across the uh, front as retention for the bottles and then I'm going to have oak shelving and I got a couple three inch pieces in here too looks like so I wanted those one inch pieces because I didn't want it want this to be overpowering. And there we have it. And these are all, all are of course bourbon barrel stays. And you can see how dirty the box is. So they all have uh, char on them. We can not knock the char off, uh, get rid of all that stuff. A lot of it, some of us come off in the box. Uh, but these are actually all white oak barrel stays. Re I'm repurposing them. They're about an inch thick, roughly. And it's at varying widths. So, let me tell you up front, this is not a 30 minute project. Not a 30 minute project. I'm going to take probably, I'm guessing between 6 and 10 hours to do this, uh, plus dry time, cure time for a finish and, and glue. So, but I'll break it up into a couple different segments you guys can watch and get a feel for how it goes. Uh, he did send me one of the bung, bung hole uh, plugs, which I think is pretty cool. So we'll see. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll leave that in or maybe I'll take it out. I'm not quite certain yet. Depends on the aesthetic I'm trying to get here. And by the way, this is going to a friend of mine, uh, Carla and Frank, out in uh, Wisconsin. So keep watching. I'll show you how to get rid of all this gunk off these and make these <laughs> much nicer to handle in the shop and yeah, not quite so messy. So. Okay, a couple tools to use. Wire brush and a scraper. You see how the scraper takes it right off? Hit with a wire brush. By the way, folks, don't do this unless you're outside or you have well, vent well ventilated area or you uh, are wearing a mask, N95 mask. You don't want to be breathing in any of this dust.
And there's the first one. Now that's done, we'll do that on all the rest. Okay, for our next operation, we're gonna blow out uh, all the dust out of the, out of the uh, let's see how that goes, out of the grain. Last but not least, we're going to hit a little polyurethane. We're just going to slap it on because all we're trying to do is seal up the uh, soot and grain just to keep the uh, shop looking good, keep the hands clean. Now I have diluted this with uh, some turpentine just to give it, make it a little more watery. They really want it into all the uh, cracks and crevices and green. I don't want it laying on top. setup of how it might look. Two at the bottom down here. I got one in the center, two at the top. When I put the shells in, I'm going to run uh, about a two and a half inch piece outside this along with the same, bearing the curve here. And that's where I'll put holes for the blant and corks. So it'll look up, it'll look pretty good when it's done. Still a lot of work to do. A lot of this stuff is real dirty. There's still a lot of fit up to do. So but we're making progress. Okay, just finished squaring up the last of the uh, sides. So I'm gonna have two of these here with bum holes in them. These are gonna be my sides. They're about just a scuttle over with three and a half, which will fit on the same bottle uh, at the far ends. And then center, of course, there's a uh, curve. So plenty of room to fit just about any file they want to put on the shelf. Okay, this is a real quick uh, layout, kind of a dry fit thing, just to see how everything's going to be looking on this. So you can see I have, uh, I have two down here, two in the middle, and one at the top. Uh, I'm kind of using the drawing that I created. Some changes though, I'm using, I'm adjusting for the material that I have. So where this says 27 and 8 uh, inside dimension, down here at the bottom and at the top, I'm setting that to 29 because that maximizes the, uh, the utility and use of my, uh, my barrel staves so I can get these put in properly. And, uh, geez, we should be ready to go. Only thing else I have to do, uh, I do have to cut the, the uh, shelves here. And I also have to do some chiseling because you can see the uh, curve. So when this curve touches down here, I need to cut just maybe a sixteenth of an inch out right here, a little triangle piece, so that this sits directly on here. And when I glue, I'm not gluing to the char, I'm gluing directly to the white oak. So it's white oak to white oak interface. The char really is not that strong. 
Um, so even even though I am screwing this down, I also want to you know glue it because I am I am basically building the shelf for someone's prized possessions, which is whiskey. So let's get busy. So I have this ten foot one by six, which is actually uh, it says it's five and a half. Let's see what it really is. Uh, yeah, five and a half. So that's pretty good. But anyway, so I have this ten foot one by one by six that I'm going to have to uh, cut down into several pieces for the shelving. First piece is going to be 29. I'm going to have another 29. That's for my top and bottom. And then I'll measure once those are done. I'll, I'll clamp it up and measure the actual dimension for the center section. So let's make some noise. I have my 29 inch uh, top shelf and bottom shelf clamped in here, pretty much right where they're going to be. So that's going to set the, the uh, center distance. Let's see what my center distance actually is. Be looking at 30, 30 and three quarters. So 30 and three quarters right here at the bung holes because that's where the, uh, the center shelf is going to go. There's going to be about 14 inches between shelves, roughly. Plenty of room for any kind of uh, liquor bottle that needs to go in here. Liquor bottles are generally, I think they're like 12 inches tall by about uh, three and a half inches diameter, generally. Uh, so plenty of room uh, to get things, those things in and out. Now, one thing you'll notice is that these these uh, shelves are a little wider than the sides, right? But what I'm going to do put in the barrel stave that's going to go here in the lower part because every barrel stave is different so it has to be done individually and hand hand coat. So I'm going to mark a line under here so I can cope right to that line and that line will match the uh, barrel stave on the inside. Two reasons for doing that. One is we don't have to worry about things falling down through the shelf unit. Don't really need to do that because let's face it a bottle is three and a half inches in diameter. It's not going to. But you may want to put something in here at some point, you know, a, 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 a small trinket, a, a bottle opener, those kind of things, you know, corkscrew, and it won't fall to the bottom. Easily done. So, these things have to be coped individually, though, because every barrel stave is different, you know, and then they have to go in the, the right place to match the barrel stave. The second reason, however, is that I'm going to drive a couple of screws through this, little tiny finish screws into the shelf, which is going to add some more stability and strength to the, to the uh, shelving unit. A good thing because, like I said, this is holding someone's treasure. So keep watching and let's keep moving. Okay, we'll mark it off 30 and 3 quarters. Let's make some noise. And there's 80 bucks of wood. That middle shelf fits like a glove. Perfect. But one thing you might notice here is that the shelf, middle shelf, matches the outside of this barrel stave. That's a problem because what I need to put in here, I need another two inches because I need a gallery out here that's going to follow the curve of the uh, barrel stave and that gallery is going to be for Blanton corks. So I'm going to have to actually add a piece to this. So let me get, we'll cut another piece and we'll have to do some glue up and uh, a little bit of sanding and trimming and we'll be good. Okay. What I'll do now is, is I'm just centering this by, by feel. And you'd be surprised how, how close you're going to get just by feel after you've done this for a while. So I'm within, probably within less than a sixteenth uh, of an inch left right, just by feel. Uh, this type of thing, it doesn't really make that much difference because I'm going to register the next piece off of this one. If it's off by a sixteenth of an inch, it's wood. So the next thing I want to do is I want to mark the outside and the inside. And uh, in doing that, I want to, the reason I'm doing that is I'm uh, 
marking out what I need to chisel out to get the front piece to lay flat on the side piece. Because the curvature, I've got about an eighth inch gap here roughly, so I'm using an eighth inch spacer just to mark out. Just to mark out where that is. And this is all dark, so you probably can't see any of it, but this area right here is what I'm going to chisel out. So I'll put a saw cut here down to this depth, and then I'll just chisel out this small piece here. And I'll do that on all the rest of these. Then when I put this down, I put a little glue on it. This piece will sit flush against this, and the glue will bind this piece to the side. And then with a screw in it, it's never going anywhere. So, let's keep working. Now I have to go ahead and extend the bottom shelf. That piece is going to be 29 inches long, which is longer than this board here, but that's okay at the moment. But i got to make it 2 and 11 16 inch wide. That'll give me enough room to put in a curved uh, cork rail for Blanton's corks. So, now let me get this thing cut. Let's make some noise. Now I'm going to take the middle shelf and I'm going to joint this edge using my table saw. There are some folks out there who tell you, oh, you can't do this on a table saw. Um, they're not right. There's hundreds of ways you could do kind of different, every different thing in woodworking, which is why I love it. All I'm going to do is run this by, take about a half a blade width off this edge. It's a machined edge anyway, but it's not really a glue edge. When I get done using this blade, it'll be a glue edge. Let's make some noise. Okay, just a quick check. And you can see that's a perfect glue edge. Once I get it clamped and, and uh, leveled out, we should be good. So glue up couldn't be easier. A couple clamps, some glue, we'll be all set. All I'm going to do is pop some glue on this, drop some F-type F -type clamps on it, and we'll call it good. To do is scrub the edges together then break it and you can see where the glue didn't cover so I'm missing some coverage right along this edge this is really good through here but I need a little more glue a couple spots I want the, I want the glue to be uh, uniform across this once I scrub it I don't need a lot to put on there just a little bit should be good. Back down, a quick scrub. Break it. All right, I still got some spots that didn't have enough glue on them. I definitely don't want a glue star joint. But I also don't want the stuff running out all over the place. So it's a fine balance between the two. And there we go, looking good. All I'm going to do is throw in some clamps. Four clamps in place, that should be all I need. These are snugged up, they're not tightened down so tight that I squeeze everything out of the joint. I do want to do a little cleanup of some of the glue. Make sure they tighten up so they don't come off when I pick it up. One thing you need to do is, if you're doing this, is make sure that the uh, that the uh, two pieces are matched, so you don't have any high spots. It looks pretty good. Great thing about this glue is it cleans up as long as it's wet. It 
cleans up with water. Once it dries, man, forget it. So we'll just clean up. That'll save me a lot of time tomorrow once I pull it out of the uh, out of the clamps. Leaving the clamps for uh, 24 hours, or well, at least two hours, and then come back. We we'll do some sanding on it. I have the center section uh, set up. I have it glued, dried, sanded, and trimmed to fit. Now what we want to do is we want to mark our shelves to match the radius of the barrel staves. So all I'm going to do is come in here and pretty easily and simply mark it. You guys probably can't see it, but it's a really, really nice line here that I can easily follow with me with my bandsaw. So the first one done, I have two more to do, and we'll take it over to the bandsaw. So 14 inch delta bandsaw. I got a 3 inch blade in here. Should make this cut very easy. All I'm going to do is take, cut this sweeping arc out. So let's get to it. Okay, one down, two to go. Okay, all the curves are fared. They look really nice. No dimples, ripples, or anything else. No burn marks. So this is actually the most important curve too, because this is the one that's going to be seen. The rest are all behind the barrel staves. So as long as they're pretty darn close, we're good enough with it. Uh, it's just to keep things from falling down. This one, however, we're going to put a couple holes in for those blatant corks. Okay, ready to route the edges. A friend asked me once, why I have so many routers? It's because I don't have to change the bits. Like anything, changing bits takes time. If I have three or four bits that I use continually, like this eighth inch round over, it's way easier just to grab a, a router it's already chucked up into and, and hit it. Uh, by the way, this is an eighth inch quarter cable router a bit uh, in a uh, DeWalt compact router. So let's make some noise. So that eighth inch took off exactly the amount that I want, which is really nice. I do have to do a little bit of sanding because uh, there's still a few rough areas here, but uh, that's too thick. But we'll get some sandpaper and do that. So again, 220 sandpaper. I know those guys go down to 320, 400, 600. If you're making a pen, 600 is a really good idea. But there you go. Nice and smooth. Cool. Break the back edge a little too. Just in case when this gets hung, someone grabs hold of it to hang it. It's all a smooth surface or a rounded surface to, uh, if they ever grab the center, center shell. So no splinters, no rough edges. So a little rough right there. I don't know about you, but I hate getting splinters. Okay, on to the next step. So my 7 8 holes are drilled. All I want to do is just round the edges. So when you're inserting the, the uh, corks, uh, it eases the entry.
doing now is I'm chiseling a flat spot for the edge of the uh, shelf. That way it'll fit slot directly in here. We'll have uh, contact directly with the white oak. Uh, gives a great glue surface. Uh, it takes a little more time to do this, but hey, better than having a touch down on two edges and having a big gap here. And uh, the other thing is, while the glue will stick pretty well to this uh, char, the problem is the char will break away pretty easily. So this gives a really strong joint. I want to give you a couple tips on working with white oak, especially this type of white oak, which is well seasoned and very hard. Uh, first thing is always pre-drill. Uh, these I'm using these uh, GRK uh, trim head screws. They're an inch and a half long. That'll be plenty long enough to go in here because I'm going to counter bore these. Basically, this is a uh, 736, 30, I'm sorry, 730, 732nds inch drill. I've got it flagged off here at 3 8 of an inch, so that basically just tells me I'm going to counter bore 3 8 of an inch. And that'll set the head down 3 8 of an inch, a little, over, a little under 3 8 of an inch of the surface. These are actually uh, self starters, so they have a self starting feature here, but this wood is so hard, I'm going to through drill through here and I'm going to start a hole in the side once I get them in place. And that should make it easy enough and reduce the chance of actually breaking the screw. Now, getting these started, I could try and just put it on there and give it a shot. The drill might walk. I don't want to do that. So I'm using a bird cage awl. A bird cage awl is nothing more than a point with four sides, so a four sided pyramid. And what this does for me is when I push it into the wood and rotate it back and forth, the four sides act as a cutter. And they actually cut a little bit of a hole in there. So, in most woods, that's a good screw starter. In this wood, I'm just using it to start my drill. So, let's get started. These, uh... I'm really happy with these trim head screws.
few more screws, a few more pieces, I can start uh, filling the nail holes and uh, then throw out a coat of uh, stain. And then the varnish. So we're close to wrapping the project up. Once I wipe it off, once I wipe this stuff off, it's going to look really nice. And look at that, man. Boy, I tell you what, the great thing is you get the variation in color from uh, the patina off the barrel where the bands were. And the rust coming through, and then where it was lighter wood, you actually get an aged oak look. So, pretty pleased with it. We'll come back when I get finished. Okay, staining is done. All we have to do is wait for this to dry, and we're going to throw on some varnish, and our project will be complete. 
Okay, our first coat is on. I'll wait about two hours, throw the second coat on, and then once it's cured, I'm going to hit it with the uh, Have it decide, either 4 out steel wool or 320, and then I'm going to put a coat of paste wax on it. When that's done, it's going to be smooth as a baby's butt. So, back in a little while. Well, I have to say, I'm really happy with how this thing turned out. I, I, it just, love it. It looks absolutely beautiful. I gotta say, the the whole, the whole dark, uh, dark stain, polyurethane, barrel stave, really went well. I like the fact that uh, the patina on the wood was reserved, even after I did some sanding. So it looks really cool. You can see the barrel read right through it where the barrel bands were. Great. I really like this this uh, cork gallery right here. This where uh, you can throw Blanton's corks in here. Uh, perfect for that. So it's a great display. Uh, if, you're, if you're a Blanton's drinker, <laughs> and where this is going, <laughs> my friends are Blanton drinker, Blanton's drinkers. So it should be good. You can see, actually, I'm a Scotch guy. But, uh, but hey, a lot of fun building this. I got a chance to use a lot of tools that I haven't, haven't used before. Uh, it's always good to do a bigger project off and on because it, you get a chance to use a lot of, uh, a lot of your skills wider range of skills. Um, you've seen a lot of my videos before this. They're fast, cheap materials, you know, inexpensive materials, uh, limited tool set. You can get in, get out, and be done. Um, all cool stuff, but not quite the same as doing a, a complex project like this. So, so a couple things. There's a link to the bottom. All right, there's a link specifically in my blog to, uh, for the, uh, to the sketch for this. So you can download that sketch, take a look at it. Mind you, it's a sketch, so every time you get new uh, barrel staves, you're going to have to basically rethink the whole thing because none of the barrel staves are the same. There's also a link to uh, Skull Creek Design in Midland, Michigan. All right, They supplied the barrel staves for this, so hey, Travis, if you're out there listening, thumbs up. I appreciate it. Great experience uh, in getting those, uh, things, those barrel staves to me, uh, so thanks again. But there's also links to some of the tools I used, um, not all of them, but you know some of the more important ones that you might not already have. So explore those links, check them out, and see what see what's uh, down there, see if it's kind of fun. Um, if you're going to make this, all right, yourself, hey, post some pictures, drop some comments in. I'd love to see how this turns out if you're making this thing. Um, like I said, it's a great project. It's pretty complex, uh, so. It's kind of frustrating too, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> it's kind of frustrating because these barrel staves, like I said, are all warp twisted and everything else. None of them are square and straight. But that's part of the fun. You get a chance to do some stuff that, that uh, you know, extend your knowledge in woodworking and uh, get the whole thing looking as good as this. So on that note, folks, if you enjoy, enjoyed this, please hit like and subscribe. Make sure you hit the little bell when you subscribe so that you get uh, the uh, notification that my new videos are up. And uh, hey, until next time, hey, good making.